Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Filming Night Podcast. My name is Xavier Tony, and today we are going to be discussing the James Cameron classic, The Terminator. The Terminator begins with a mysterious man spawning from a lightning strike in Los Angeles in 1984. He walks over to a group of teenagers screwing around and asks for their clothes, and we get a true sense of the brutality and horror that the rest of the movie has in store for us. When the mysterious man kills two of the teenagers, leaving one alive begging for his life, who in turn gives up his clothes. The opening moments of the Terminator are ominous, intriguing, and unsettling, as there is barely any dialogue. The eerie synth and bass noises riddled within the soundtrack. The sheer force that the mysterious man exudes shows us that he is a force not to be reckoned with. Then, another man spawns from a different lightning strike, also in Los Angeles, in 1984. His name is Kyle Reese, and we don't know why he's here, but he clearly does. The entire scene when Kyle first arrives is so well done as it shows the sheer terror and panic and sense of urgency, mostly done by the incredible acting by Michael Bean. The way he runs around sporadically, not knowing what year he's in, trapped inside a dark alleyway making his escape from the cops, is truly amazing to watch. Like I said before, the first 20 minutes of this movie has basically no dialogue. It's all a visually storytelling spectacle. You get the scenes of Kyle running through the alleyways, hiding in the mall, grabbing his disguise, and sneaking away into the dark Los Angeles night. The atmosphere set up just within the first few minutes alone is astonishing, and it truly grabs your attention and sucks you into this world. It may only be Los Angeles, a city that does exist in real life, but the filmmaking here makes it seem otherworldly, like we're watching a scene out of Blade Runner, with neon lights, dark skies, and an incredible score by Brad Fidel. The opening credits of Terminator are accompanied by one of the best movie themes of all time, with mechanical, almost industrial rhythm to the beats and sounds, with classic 80s synths giving a beautiful melody. I'm not familiar with the musical terms, but the soundtrack created for this film is truly something special. I can say that this movie would not have the same atmosphere, the same feeling, or the same impact and long-lasting legacy status if not for the incredible soundtrack and score. We're finally introduced to Sarah Connor a young woman who seems to be hustling in the big city just to make a living at a waitress job. The diner scene does its job well, I guess, as it genuinely frustrates me. All the people at that diner were acting like such inconsiderate asses, and that one kid pouring ice cream into her apron just, like, genuinely pissed me off. I'd hate my job too if I was her. She sees a news report on the TV that a woman with the same name has been killed within the area. Of course, she doesn't think much of it at first. We don't really get to see much of Sarah's character early on, as she's just a normal person trying to live her life. We then get the horrifying scene of the Terminator played by Arnold Schwarzenegger, who exudes such a brute force about him that makes him terrifying to watch on screen. As in broad daylight, he knocks on a woman's door, asks if she is Sarah Connor, and when she says yes, he busts through the door, shoots her point blank about six times, and this is when you realize this is not a regular sci-fi movie, this is a straight horror movie. The emotionless, lifeless shell of human flesh and skin, but underneath, a brutal killing machine with only one target. Later that day, Sarah and her friend Ginger are going for a night out dancing, but the guy Sarah was supposed to go out with bails on her, so she ends up going to see a movie, but she bumps into Kyle on the way and gets scared that he's following her, so she goes and hides in a nightclub. It's a great intercut between Sarah fearing for her life while Kyle follows her, along with the Terminator raiding the apartment and killing Ginger and her boyfriend in another fantastically brutal scene. Kyle is the one meant to protect Sarah, but she and the audience don't know that yet, which leads to one of the best scenes in the entire movie. It starts out we're in the nightclub, and in walks the Terminator, and in walks Kyle, Sarah in between the two, and in this scene we get one of the best shots I've ever seen in a movie, when Sarah knocks something off the table, bends down to pick it up, and as she does, in the background, the Terminator walks amongst the crowd of dancing people, but the focus is right on him, and the shot moves in slow motion, just as he looks in the direction of Sarah, not seeing her because she's leaned over. It's an incredibly suspenseful and well-directed scene that adds so much tension to an already tense situation. Finally, Kyle gets a sight of the Terminator, and the Terminator gets a sight of Sarah, and Kyle whips out his shotgun and the nightclub shootout begins. Bullets flying everywhere, innocent people getting shot and injured, glass shattering, bottles flying, it's a brutal bloodbath. Finally, Kyle gets a few good shots in on the Terminator and reaches for Sarah and gives the classic line, Come with me if you want to live. 
which at this point has been done to death in the Terminator franchise, has been parodied in many other films, or has been used as an homage to this movie. But nonetheless, it's still the first time it's used here, and it has such an urgency and fear to it that makes it better than all the other times it's used, as we see the Terminator lean and stand up after just taking five shotguns to the chest, and seeing Sarah's horrified reaction as he stands up just adds to the fear that we as the audience are also feeling. This then leads to a fantastic car chase where the Terminator leaps onto the windshield after catching fire, and another fantastic shot of him punching through the windshield of the car. I need to also mention the music here is fantastic as well for the chase scenes. Then we get the most important part of the movie because up until this point we still have no idea why the Terminator is coming to kill Sarah, why Kyle is here, and questions need to be answered. Kyle tells Sarah that the Terminator is sent from the future to kill Sarah because Sarah's kid named John Connor is the one who leads the humans in the war against the machines. So killing Sarah will ensure that John never gets born, but Kyle is here to save Sarah and make sure that doesn't happen. Now, this is also interesting because it brings up something called the predestination paradox, which I didn't know about until researching for this movie, but it does help explain some of the burning questions. Kyle was sent from the future to save Sarah from being killed so that John can be born. And since it's revealed later in the movie that Sarah and Kyle have sex leading to John being conceived, then there is no possible future where Sarah is actually killed. Otherwise, the future that Kyle is sent from would have never existed. If John was killed in present day, he wouldn't be the leader of the rise against the machines in the future, and Kyle would have never been sent back. Hopefully that made sense. What the predestination paradox is, is when a future time traveler goes back in time and fulfills their role in history rather than changing it. So there is a set path that Kyle will follow because in order for him to even get sent back to present day, John Connor must remain alive. But for that to happen, he must keep Sarah alive. But the fact that John Connor even exists in his past or Sarah's future means that no matter what, Kyle will always be successful in saving Sarah. There is no future where Sarah is killed and John does not start the revolution. This paradox is tied to the idea of fate, and it makes sense because from what's been stated so far, what is meant to happen will always happen regardless of human intervention. The way this paradox is fulfilled is that the photo that Kyle has of Sarah is the exact same photo taken by the boy at the end of the film at the gas station, meaning both Kyle and the Terminator were sent back in time and fulfilled their role in history rather than changed it. After this scene, the Terminator heads back to some warehouse or some random room with a bathroom and gives James Cameron and his team a chance to flex their amazing special effects. All the practical effects done with the tendons showing us metal pieces moving the Terminator's fingers do the incredible eye scene where he pulls out his eye revealing the classic red dot Terminator eye. These are all fantastic to look at. In the final fight of the movie, there is some stop motion done that I think looks fantastic. Here, however, there is a certain part where I guess they couldn't put the metal eye on Arnold for some reason, so they created this entire fake plastic face of Arnold that looks really bad in my opinion. It could have worked better if they didn't show it up close so much because to me it looks really fake. If they had only shown us it for a few seconds, it would have been much more effective. I can't complain though, this was 1984 and Effects like these hadn't been done much before, so I gotta give credit to the amazing team that worked on them, but clay-faced Arnold is a no from me. The scene in the police station has become a staple of the movie and of the series as a whole. This scene in my opinion is one of the most disturbing, especially the scene of Kyle freaking out over the security camera screaming into it about how this machine will come to kill Sarah and there's nothing you can do about it. The sense of impending doom and dread that nothing can be done about it is frightening to me, especially given the fact that Sarah doesn't know anything about the future world, but Kyle does. It's again thanks to the fantastic acting by Michael Bean. We then get the classic line, I'll be back. When the Terminator leaves the station and then comes right back barreling through with a car, destroying the entire building before going on a massive killing spree, managing to kill everyone but Sarah or Kyle. But if you think about it technically, there was never any chance they would get killed there. This is another standout scene from the movie, and it really showed the immense balancing act this movie was able of doing. It manages to remain a consistent sci-fi thriller, while also juggling horror aspects, mixed with the incredible action sequences. All the shootout scenes in this movie are so well done, and the car chase that follows is even better. 
you get the shots of Kyle hanging out the window blasting the shotgun, which I think are amazing. We then get a few scenes of Sarah and Kyle basically saying that they love each other, and although now I can see that it was fate that brought them together all along, I still don't really buy that you could fall in love with someone and want to have sex with them being in the situation that you're in right now. It works for the story and the overall plot, but to me it does keep, it does seem kind of forced and needed a way for them to get together so Sarah could get pregnant. But in all fairness, it does play into the idea of fate, as Kyle had seen that picture of Sarah from so long ago. The love that Kyle felt for Sarah could have been due to what they were destined to do together to help save the world, and that bond just never left. And Sarah could definitely have felt that Kyle was her savior in that moment. The craziest part is, I don't even think that Kyle knows he's John's father by the end of the movie, because Sarah could have had John at any point in the future with any man from Kyle's perspective. And the bravery and sacrifice that Kyle showed leads to Sarah to teach John about how to be a leader and be brave, all attributes of a fighting soldier when he leads the resistance. So it really is all determined by fate, how all the events lead and tie in with one another truly makes this a science fiction classic. This leads us to the final fight scene of the entire movie with the Terminator getting all his skin burned off, leaving just his endoskeleton. Now this is where the stop motion and practical effects shine because they look fantastic here. The stop motion and jittery movement of the Terminator here makes it so creepy and terrifying and it is mixed so well with the live action actors that it looks like it's right there with them. The scene where he comes barreling down the hallway while Kyle and Sarah try to close the door is terrifying, and the scene where he slowly follows them up the stairs truly looks like real life. Like, I mean, it actually looks like there's a robot following them. It's less of a fight scene and more of a chase, as there isn't much action like earlier, but Kyle ends up sacrificing himself by jabbing a bomb into the Terminator, and when it explodes, it kills him. It's great how there was no final emotional speech or any cheesy last words, he just acted quick and fast and did what he had to do to fulfill history and save Sarah. What is kind of disturbing to think about though is Kyle died not knowing if all he had done earlier to save Sarah actually worked. Thankfully it did, but due to the paradox we talked about earlier, it was always bound to happen. The sound design of the Terminator here is also so amazing, makes it really scary, and we get the final line, You're a terminated fucker! And the Terminator gets crushed with the hydraulic press shooting lightning out of its body, killing it for good. Another instance of the predestination paradox comes up in a deleted scene, but is technically canon because it is restated in the sequel. But the pieces left behind of the Terminator from when Sarah crushed it are discovered by scientists and leads to the research and development of AI, which leads to the creation of Skynet, thus leading to the creation of Terminators. I wish they had kept the scene in the final cut of the movie because it's honestly mind-blowing and really plays back into the time travel thing. The predestination paradox and idea of fate aren't really discussed at all really in this movie, neither is the effects of time travel. It's really just focusing on the story of a broken war soldier who's back to do a mission and save a woman from an unstoppable killing machine, but underneath there are some wild and insane plot devices related to time travel that make for excellent storytelling such as the one I just mentioned. The Terminator coming back in time to kill Sarah leads to the creation of Terminators in the present day. That is absolutely wild. It's the deeper details like this, along with the masterful filmmaking done by James Cameron and the rest of the crew, that made the Terminator a classic. That it remains to be all these years later. The idea of the predestination paradox is one I had not heard or thought about connecting to this movie until now, and it truly adds another layer of awesomeness. I love all the acting in this movie, I love the fantastically eerie and unsettling score. The story is timeless, and on a large enough scale to have an epic feel to it, but focused on the human aspects of Kyle and Sarah enough to make an emotionally satisfying story. Arnold is fantastic as the brutal robot killer, and James Cameron directed the hell out of this movie. It had been a while since I had sat down and revisited this film in its entirety, and I'm so glad I did, because this movie is fantastic in every way and deserves the title it holds as a masterpiece. Thank you all for listening for my in-depth discussion on The Terminator. The Film Ignite podcast is meant to ignite discussion on all things film and all things TV, so I want to hear from you. What are your thoughts on The Terminator? Let me know. As always, I'll see you all in the next episode.